Hello everyone, Seth here, and I'm here with a little bit of a tutorial about something that quite a few different people have been asking me about. Uh, most notably, quite a few people have been asking me how to actually install the randomizer, because some people have been having trouble with it, and I completely understand. It's a little bit complicated, I will be honest. So I figured might as well make a tutorial on it, give you give you a bit of explanation on how to, how, how to do it. That said, the first part of modding Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers the Sky is that you're going to need an unmodded, clean copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers the Sky. I have my copy right here, um, and I can't tell you where to find a copy like that. Uh, I can't advocate for finding it illegally. I have I've had this version for ages, uh, and I, I got it legally from my own card, but uh, I cannot tell you how to get your own copy of this. You're going to have to find a copy. That is the one part that I can't put in this tutorial. Everything else, though, I can absolutely put in this tutorial. Uh, for instance, you're also going to need an emulator to run it on. I'm using D uh, D E S M U M E. I don't know if that's supposed to be a fancy way for it to be, to be pronounced, but I spell it out usually every time. Uh, you could usually just go to downloads and follow the regular download you know pages for it and everything. Uh, but there's a variety of different DS emulators that you can run it on. And this is just the one that I use. More importantly, though, is the actual Sky Temple randomizer itself. Uh, and in order to do that, you're going to need to go to skytemple.org, as you can see right up here at the top, and scroll down to the bottom of the page. Don't hit this top button, this top download button. That is for the ROM editor, which is also a really fantastic tool, uh, but it's not the randomizer. Go ahead and click download on the randomizer button. What it's going to do is going to bring you to a separate web page for Project Pokemon with whatever the project version is now. Uh, so right now, this is version 1.0.3, I believe, and you have both opportunities to download it as for the Mac and for the PC. I'm going to go ahead and show you the PC download process. So of course, you download it right here, you save the file, and go ahead and open up the file. Okay, so a lot of different uh, programs are going to have antivirus softwares running uh, saying, hey, this is a concern. Uh, which it is, because you are you're downloading this from a completely unknown uh, territory. So go ahead and bypass it by hitting more info and run anyway. Then we're going to have this whole setup wizard right here. Just hit next for it. I uh, feel free to read through if you want. I have read through this many times, so I am familiar with it. Uh, and then just hit yep, install. Hit next, and it will go ahead and ask you where you want to install it. Uh, by default, it solves it installs it to the C drive of program files to its own individual folder. I like to change this because I have a different location for things. In particular, I have a D drive right here that I like to put it on, and so I just highlight the HD program files in the D drive, and it goes ahead and makes that folder in the that. HD program files that I have selected. Uh, you can put this literally anywhere you want, uh, but make sure it's somewhere memorable that you're able to navigate back to at some point in time. And then just hit install. It's going to run through this whole installation process right here, going ahead and installing everything. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead till this is done. All right, it looks like it's just about finished wrapping up right here. And once it finishes doing that, it's going to ask you to hit finish and it will go ahead and finish right there. Now, remember when I said you're going to have to remember where you put it? This is why. You're going to have to go ahead and navigate to wherever you put it. In my case, I saved it to data, HD program files, uh, and it's going to be in this folder, Sky Temple Randomizer. And remember, if you saved it somewhere else, it would be in that somewhere else. So if you saved it to local disk uh, program files, like its default uh, location is, uh, this is where it would be. But that's not where I saved mine to. I saved mine to the D drive HD program files, and here it is. And there's going to be a whole lot of different programs right here. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and ignore most of them. I usually sort by type, so it's a little easier to find, because right after this list of folders, we have the Sky Temple randomizer.exe. And this is what you're going to want to run. All the other files are files that help this program run, uh, but this is the program that actually randomizes the ROM for you. So it's going to take a little bit to load. Uh, it's going to pop up here any moment now. All right, and here it is. So we've got the Sky Temple randomizer right here, and it's got a whole bunch of different options that you can select. So first things you're going to notice right here, starters and NPCs. You can randomize starters, you can randomize the NPCs and bosses. Uh, but yeah, you can go ahead and turn those on or off as you wish, depending on what your preferences are for the randomizer. Uh, under the dungeon pages, there's two different pages, uh, and you can explore all these settings as you want. Uh, there's the opportunity to randomize the weather. There's the opportunity to randomize the mode of how it randomizes, so that way you'll you'll keep all the floors in the dungeon the same, 
or you can fully randomize them as they are. Uh, tile layouts, all that jazz. Uh, dungeon settings as well. You can allow or disallow monster houses. So if you don't want monster houses in, for instance, Beach Cave, you won't get monster houses in Beach Cave. Uh, you can also randomize the weather, randomize the IQ of the Pokemon you, uh, you fight, and in the case of this test dungeon up top, uh, there's an unlock question mark. Uh, this basically, if you, if you click this, it's basically saying, ah, yes, this dungeon is going to be unlocked from the start. There's also this improvements page, which comes with a bunch of different patches. Uh, the first one, it will download any portraits that have currently been made by the community for Pokemon that don't normally have additional portraits. Uh, there's also that move shortcut page. That's the, if you hold down the L button and then any of the face buttons, it will do that move associated with it. And then I don't fully understand what the apply unused dungeon chance patch is. Uh, but I leave it on because, from what I understand, it's a good improvement. It's under the improvements category. So, you know, that's usually a good thing. And then Pokemon, you can actually randomize quite a few different things about the Pokemon. Uh, you can randomize their IQ groups, so basically the order in which uh, they will get their IQs. Uh, you can randomize their abilities, which I think is pretty interesting. It puts all their abilities into a little pool and randomizes them. So a Pokemon that you're familiar with might not have the ability that you think it's going to have. And this is one that I didn't turn on, randomize the typings. Yeah, it, it does exactly what it says it does. It completely randomizes the typing of the Pokemon. So you can come in, in contact with like an Ice-type Charizard or something like that, which is really fun, but also a little terrifying. You can also randomize the movesets. This is something I turned off for my playthrough. Uh, I had it set to no, but you can have it be a fully randomized moveset. So any Pokemon can have any room. You have no clue what it's going to be. Uh, you can have, you can guarantee that the first move is going to deal damage, or you can guarantee that the first move is going to deal damage and be of the same type as your uh, Pokemon. Uh, but these are completely up to you. It's whatever option you want. And then there's the opportunity to ban unknowns, uh, which will stop unknowns from being randomized into the pool. Speaking of that randomized abilities pool, uh, here it is. You could choose what abilities get randomized. So, for instance, Forecast is not one of the abilities that gets put into the randomization pool. Uh, same thing with Wonder Guard, Unburden, No Guard, Money, 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 and Null. Which, to be fair, if the Null ability were shuffled into that, that would be kind of not good. But yeah, there's, there's all these abilities, and if you don't want to have the potential of a Pokemon having one of these, you can go ahead and turn it off. It's entirely up to you. Uh, locations right here. This simply changes the location names. Uh, so I have mine randomized in the playthrough, which is why you get interesting names for every single dungeon. And cool thing is you can actually choose like what the what the possible names are. So in case I wanted a specific a specific dungeon going to be called the Dank uh, Dank something, maybe like Dank Trees or whatever. Uh, there's going to be a dungeon that uh, randomized one of these first words, one of these many many first words. It's a long thing with one of these many many second words uh, but make sure just each line has its own word so this line will be a prefix this line will be a suffix and then if i hit randomize those are both going to appear in one of the dungeons hopefully we'll see it's random that's kind of the point of it and you can also randomize the text of chapters uh this is once again just a coming from a pool of different things so i thought it'd be really funny to have uh you know some custom ones in there but i didn't add them to my playthrough and if you notice there's some that you recognize from my playthrough for instance joker's trick that was one that i pointed out in the previous one one of my favorites down here sulfur bunny we hope you're okay sulfur bunny's the the creator of one of my favorite comics that uh hasn't said anything to the internet in quite some time they've got some shout outs quite a few of them are custom for the pokemon mystery dungeon community uh but you can go ahead and change them as you wish if you want to randomize them and of course if you don't you could just turn that off it's up to you something else that i didn't do you could randomize the text now this seems chaotic and i haven't actually tried how it's going to work so i'm actually going to try it this time around uh, but you can randomize all the text in the game so the main text file it contains everything for most of the overworld dialogue so all the all the overworld dialogue is going to get <laughs> randomized but as it warns this is potentially unstable could lead to game crashes uh, more importantly story dialogue is also unstable but it randomizes the story text uh i haven't actually tried it with those on because uh, i'm scared of it being crashing but for this example i'm gonna go ahead and show you them on and then down here you can set whatever seed you want uh if you don't want to set a seed it will randomize the seed that is kind of the point of a randomizer uh, but in case you and a friend are racing on the same seat or something like that, that's a way that you can guarantee that. You can input the ROM, which is the important part right here. It's going to ask you to choose a ROM, and this does not look like your normal file viewer, right? So you're just going to have to navigate to wherever you have that ROM. Uh, I have mine in a folder called ROMs and ISOs, uh, and here is the unmodded PMD NEO, uh, PMDEOS.NDS file that I showed off to you earlier. 
Uh, you're going to want to double click that to select it. And as you can see, it popped up right here. It is selected as the ROM being inputted. Uh, you can either choose to save or load custom ROM settings. So in case you and a friend want to have a very specific set of settings that you want, you don't have to tell each other what it is. You could literally just save those settings, send them to a friend, and they will have those same settings uh, whenever you load them up. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now because I'm just myself right now. And I'm going to hit randomize. It's going to ask you one last thing. Uh, where you want it to be randomized to. So I'm going to go ahead and save it to that ROMs and ISO folders, but you can save it anywhere, be it your own desktop, be it, another, be it the default of the Sky Temple randomizer folder. Uh, you can save it wherever you want. I'm going to save it to the ROMs and ISOs folder. And then up here at the top, you get to name it whatever you want. Uh, example, randomize file. Boom. And then just hit enter. And I'll go ahead and start randomizing it. While it's randomizing, we can show you that seed. Uh, I unfortunately did not save what my seed was for my main thing. I would really only use the seed for racing. This randomization does take quite some time, so I will be get back to you when it is finished. Now, I will say at this section for the downloading portraits for NPCs, you're going to have to be connected to the internet for that, because it downloads them from the internet. In fact, I promised that you that I would show you what website that it, it downloads them from, so it downloads them from this sprites.pmdcollab.org website. Uh, you can go ahead and see all the Pokemon that they have successfully worked on. Uh, any of them that say fully featured, it means that they have, you know, all the faces in the portraits for you. Uh, all these different emotions, the entire range of it exists. And this one is in the base game. It was created by Chunsoft. But other Pokemon like uh, Wormadam or something like that, it was uh, created by Duncan Doe. Or a Pokemon like Chinchou, also created by Duncan Doe. Uh, there's quite a few different creators of the Pokemon like these. But it seems like the only example ones are Chunsoft or Duncan Doe. <laughs> You can also get additional help for both the Sky Temple ROM editor and Sky Temple randomizer on the Sky Temple Discord right here. Uh, Paracoopa is the person who created many of these tools. Uh, but there's quite a few additional helpers who, you know, if you ask a question, they will answer. And it looks like while I was talking about the Discord, uh, the randomization was completed. So let's go ahead and close out of the randomizer right here and open up the emulator that we were talking about earlier. So this is my personal layout for DESMUME. Uh, I have it laid out side by side. So that top screen is here on the left, uh, bottom screen is here on the right. But more importantly, what you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna go to File, Open ROM, try and find where you save that ROM, which case mine opens straight up to the ROMs and ISOs page. And here's that example randomized file.nds file that was created by the randomizer. So just double click it to open it up. And if you look, here it is, it's opening on up. All right, and to go ahead and show you a little bit about just proof that it's randomized, uh, right off the bat, the text is fully randomized. Uh, so the Moltres joined the team. Yep, that's randomized. Uh, we got <laughs> these randomized too, which makes it a little bit funny. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with it. A clear aqua blue. Hey, what's that? There's someone behind you. So, did you just look right now? Yeah, so e even the text in this uh, in this little section is randomized as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip past all of it. And as you can see, the Pokemon itself has already been randomized. Um, it's hard to really tell exactly what it's talking about uh, when all the text is randomized like this. Uh, <laughs> so without further ado, a Ration Hasty type like you, your aura is a deep green. Cool, thanks. I don't really care too much about that. And then, uh, so... The, so because text is randomized, the names of the Pokemon are also going to be randomized. Uh, if you don't make the text randomized, they're actually going to be the proper Pokemon that they are. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick Shelter, <laughs> which this is most definitely not Shelter, uh, but I don't want to rename it. Yeah, all, all that text is, and it's important to note that all the text is randomized within their sections. Like all the text that showed up is text that would have showed up in some other context for that whole uh, identity determining stuff. And uh, it looks like it's taken a little bit to load. All right, so I worry that the ROM has just crashed because as it said, uh, the text randomization is a little bit unstable and it might crash, which is a little unfortunate that I can't do a whole playthrough of the text being randomized like that, but important to know for whenever you go ahead and do your playthrough. Regardless though, that's how I'm making my randomizer series. I'm definitely not using that exact ROM. I'm using the ROM that I laid out earlier for you. Uh, the, the one that's not and you got text randomized and all that jazz. But uh, if you want more information, skytemple.org and click on the Discord page. It's a fantastic way to get far more information, far more help than this video is going to give you. Uh, you can also support Paracoopa right here on the coffee page and uh, more info right here on the info page. Uh, there's lots of opportunities to learn more about both Sky Temple as the ROM hack editor and Sky Temple as the randomizer right down here. 
Uh, but thank you all for watching, and I hope you use this tutorial to make some really fun and randomized adventures in the future. Have a fantastic rest of the day!